Good morning, folks. It's Kat's birthday today, and in addition to being my wife, she's also the reason there is a formal organization here. I may know a thing or two about the sun and earthquakes, but my wife is the glue holding space weather news together, and at eight months pregnant, it'd be great to shove some positivity in her direction this morning. You guys ready? Let's go. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com and finding a very calm last 24 hours on our star. We've got some bright points where magnetic field bunching at the surface occurs, big dark coronal hole swinging through as well, very visible at the limb. Solar flaring is still weighed down. Those little B flares you see followed the release of two filamentary ejecta events on the northwest departing limb. Snap, snap, flare, flare, but not at any significant level. Solar wind definitively calming right now as the previous coronal hole stream ends having produced no geomagnetic storms. The next stream is due as early as today, however, from the now departing group. You can see how big the trailing portions of the coronal hole are all the way to the left. Let's go run down some earthquake activity. So let's start with a recap of yesterday morning in one of the red alert star areas. We took that magnitude 7.3 in the Philippines, but it was deep, which means more could be in the offing for the area. New Zealand indeed took a moderate shake in their alert zone as well, but focused north of that on the yellow, because after the big 7.3, I saw major potential disappearing along with the alert stars, but a spreading of the moderate risk, and that Fiji, Vanuatu, Southwest Pacific Islands alert went from yellow to red. It was just a few hours later when a 6.3 struck the Solomon Islands, epicenter just north of the line, but the affected range did include the alert. However, it will not count for our hit statistics because at 6.3, it's likely a mere aftershock of the 7.8 that hit the exact same area back on December 8th. As much as that stings, we get no credit for predicting aftershocks, even a month later. We're coming to a fantastic new paper on filaments and local magnetism and characteristics on our star. They use multiple wavelengths and zoom perspectives to offer a detailed picture of the nuts, gears, and bolts that make up a sunspot anchored solar prominence, aka the plasma filament. We're next at NASA with two new ocean animations from the Goddard SVS. First one shows sea surface height anomaly, which isn't so interesting until you realize they can derive magnetic field models from those motions. If you are predicting earthquakes, I honestly feel like a major clue is just being given away here, especially in the tight end looks with strong gradients. Of course, if predicting earthquakes is your goal, you may want to come out to Observing the Frontier 2017. The full forecasting process with examples will be part of the show, and I'd like to publicly extend an invitation to Dong Choi, John Casey, John Coleman, and Bruce Laybourne. If you guys can make it out to Albuquerque, your ticket is on me. We've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.